Hey guys, I hope you've had a good morning and um, and that you've been working on your schoolwork and that it hasn't been too overwhelming for your parents. I snuck away here in my room because Peyton is upstairs practicing the piano and Parker is downstairs practicing the drums and it's loud. I don't know if you can hear it, so I came back here and shut the door to read to you the second chapter of Junie B. Jones' Toothless Wonder. It's kind of been a while since we read the first one. In the first one, she was sitting around her classroom, her first grade classroom, remember? Now she's in first grade, and she was wiggling her tooth, and she told she was writing in her journal about it, and she told Mr. Scary that she had a loose tooth, and it was a top tooth, and Mr. Scary and Junie B figured out that she was the first person in her class that was gonna lose a tooth on the top, and that was really, really special. And she asked Mr. Scary if she could have a prize for being the first person to lose a top tooth, and he kind of made her a star, and May was a little bit jealous that Junie B got a star on her shirt for being the first person to lose a top tooth. And that took us to chapter two, and it's called Uncle Lou. The speaker came at 10 o'clock. Her name was Miss Chris. Miss Chris told us all about recycling. Also, she showed us a movie. It was called Dan Dan the Soda Can. It was very thrilling, I tell you, because Dan Dan the Soda Can lived in a soda machine at a gas station. Then one day, a lady bought him to drink. Only too bad for Dan Dan, because after the lady drank his soda, she threw him right out her car window, and Dan Dan got his can all dented. But hooray, a cop saw the lady littering, and he gave her a ticket. Then a can man took Dan Dan to a recycling center, and the man got cash money. Plus, Dan Dan got fixed up as good as new, and bingo, he turned into Dan Dan the orange juice can, it was a miracle, I tell you. Room one clapped and clapped at that happy ending. Then Miss Chris passed around stickers of Dan Dan the soda can for us to stick to our shirts. And it's the sticker said, recycling makes sense. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? So they found out if you recycle, you can get money. And sense is a way to talk about money. But it's also, we say, does that make sense up here? So they thought that was a funny joke. Okay, there's no words on this page, so I'm just going to turn it towards me. After that, all of us went to lunch and recess, and we were still in happy moods. On the playground, Jose and Lenny asked Shirley, uh, and on the playground, Jose and Lenny and Shirley asked to see my loose tooth. Then pretty soon, the other children wanted to see it too. And so finally, I stood them all in a row, and I let them look real close. After they looked, I walked down the row, and I showed them how far I could bend it. Herb clapped and clapped. Jose and Lenny whistled. <clears throat> Sheldon tried to pick me up. That is not a normal reaction, I think. You're going to look cool when it finally comes out, Junie B, said Herb. See, said Jose, you're going to look really cool, like a hockey player, I bet. Yeah, said Lenny, hockey players almost never have any teeth. Neither do kickboxers, said Shirley. Maybe you'll look like a kickboxer, Junie B. Just then, Sheldon did a sigh. I just hope you don't look like my toothless Uncle Lou, he said. My toothless Uncle Lou never brushed or flossed, and then all his teeth fell out. I made a sick face. Sheldon shrugged. Well... It's not like he's totally toothless, he said. He still has one bottom tooth left. It's kind of yellow, but it can still bite an apple. After that, Sheldon walked away. I watched him go. Then I sat down in the grass, and I tried and tried not to think of toothless Uncle Lou. That Junie B, she just worries about everything, doesn't she? After school, me and Herb rode the bus home together. We sit with each other every single day, except not on Saturdays or Sundays. Me and Herb talk about lots of stuff on the bus, only today I didn't feel like talking because I was still upset about looking like Uncle You-Know-Who. I slumped down in my seat very glum. What if I look like a weirdo, I said. Huh, Herb, what if I look like toothless Uncle Lou? Herb patted me. Don't worry, you won't, probably. 
I kept on worrying. Yeah, only today is Friday, Herb, I said, and so by Monday my tooth will be out, I bet. And so what if I come to school looking like toothless Uncle Lou, and then all of room one starts making fun of me, and they form a circle around me, and they laugh and skip and throw fruit. Now, would anybody throw fruit at school? No. Then all of a sudden I did a gasp, because an even worse problem popped in my head. I grabbed Herb's shirt. Oh no, Herb, oh no, I said. What if I don't even look like myself on Monday? Not even a tiny bit, I mean. And then I get on this bus and you don't even recognize me and so you pass right by my seat and then I have to sit by myself all alone and toothless. Herb looked down at his shirt. He said to please take my hands off of him. He smoothed himself out. Maybe you should look on the bright side, Junie B, he said. Even if all of that bad stuff happens, which it won't probably, you'll still end up with a bunch of money from the tooth fairy, right? And that's good, isn't it? As soon as he said that, chill bumps came on my skin and my stomach got flutterflies in it. I quick looked out the window so Herb couldn't see my face. Because guess what? The tooth fairy is a whole other can of worms. Hmm. So now she might be worried about the tooth fairy too. She's kind of acting like she's scared, isn't she? All right, tomorrow we'll read chapter three. It's called Ow! I bet you can predict what you think is going to happen tomorrow. I sure have enjoyed seeing all of your um, stories that you wrote and pictures that you drew this morning. And the kindergarten teachers are so proud that the kindergarten kids read 845 books last week. So you are amazing for reading that many books. And you need to give your adults and parents a big pat on the back because that was mostly because of them making sure you read and they read to you. If you're still counting how many books you read this week, you can count any of the books that Miss Givens reads to you too as part of your reads. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.